Hey everyone, this week we talked about sorting algorithms and we looked at two sorting algorithms in particular. We looked at the bubble sort algorithm, which is simple and straightforward, but not very fast. And we looked at the merge sort algorithm, which is a bit more complicated, but much more efficient in terms of big O. Bubble sort is O of n squared and merge sort is O of n log n. And I argued that n log n is significantly faster than n squared. In today's lab, you're going to see just how big of a difference that makes, because what you'll be doing is you'll be actually running a bubble sort program and a merge sort program on different size arrays, different values of n, and seeing how they scale up, how much more time it takes. We're also going to be implementing the bubble sort optimization that I mentioned briefly during the video on bubble sort. If you remember, the way bubble sort works is it makes all of these passes through the array, and we observed that the way we coded it each pass goes all the way through the array, but we observe that you actually can stop a little bit short. On each pass, you can go one shorter. <laughs> so on your first pass, you have to go all the way through, but then on the second pass, you can stop one before the end, and then you can stop two before the end, and then three before the end, and four by before the end, and so on. And so you'll be actually making this optimization, which isn't too bad, it's just changing a couple of lines of code and seeing how big of a difference that makes. And so, there's sort of two levels of optimization you can do in coding. You can choose an algorithm with a better big O, like using merge sort instead of bubble sort, or you can make sort of fine-tuned adjustments like the one I just described for bubble sort. And so in this lab, you'll see how much of a difference those two things make. Does switching to merge sort, is that a better decision? Or is making small optimizations to bubble sort a better decision? And spoiler alert, um, the switching to merge sort, you will see, is going to be a lot more effective, which is why I didn't really bother to, to do that optimization myself, but I think it's a good thing for you all to go through. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lab page. All right, so like I said in the opening, the goal of this lab is to get you to experience the difference between bubble sort and merge sort in sort of more real world terms, because when you're just learning big O, it can be hard to sort of connect what a big difference these things can make. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing with these two programs, bubble sort and merge sort, which I linked here. You should start by downloading these two programs and making three changes to both of them. The first one is to delete out the code that prints out the arrays, because as you will see if you if you leave it in there, it takes a super duper long time just to print the arrays. That actually takes longer than it does to sort them. So if we left that in there, it would just slow everything down and make the results kind of meaningless. So take that out. The second change is you're going to change the program so that instead of it being hard coded to an array of size 25, you should take in the size with arg zero. That will allow you to more quickly set the, the size of it. I'm just realizing now that unlike in past semesters, I didn't have you guys use a um, command line environment. So if you're using an IDE, if it's more convenient to you, you can like use a scanner to ask the user how big of an array they want. Either way is fine with me. But the goal of that is to make it easier to do multiple tests because then you can just put in the size each time without having to like recompile the code and stuff. Then the third change is to add code to print out how long the program takes to run. You can use these instructions from a past lab to tell you how to do that. You basically put this little line of code at the very start of your program, at the very beginning of main. Then you put this at the very end, and that takes like two snapshots. And then you can use this code to print out how many milliseconds it took. I'd recommend for this one though, probably printing it in seconds because it's going to be larger periods of time. All right, and then for this lab, you're basically going to be filling out this table, starting with n equals to a thousand, going all the way to n equals what? Yeah, a million for bubble sort with the original version, and then the optimized bubble sort, which we'll talk about in a sec, and then merge sort and fill out how much time these take. And again, I would suggest using seconds instead of milliseconds. Basically, you just divide by another thousand, of course. Now, uh, if you have hopes of bubble sort somehow uh, beating Goliath and beating merge sort, uh, I don't think that'll happen. In fact, I would suggest not even testing bubble sort past the 200,000 mark because you'll just spend so long waiting for these things to finish that it would be kind of a waste of time. So stop bubble sort and the optimized bubble sort when you get here, whereas merge sort scales better. And so you'll be able to continue down all the way to a million. And so, like I said, you'll do three tests of this. The first one will be the unmodified bubble sort, except for the three changes I listed above, and put your times down for bubble sort in this first column here. 
Then the second one is the optimized bubble sort. To do the optimization, basically you're going to make the inner for loop stop one iteration sooner each pass of the algorithm. And so the way you can do that is you have this line for the for loop, change this two here to instead of being minus two, make this minus some variable. Like you can call it int stop and then say array length minus stop. And so then you would start that variable, whatever you call it off at two. So the first time does go through to minus two, but then after each pass, you'll add one to that variable. So next time it'll be minus three and then minus four and then minus five. And that'll serve to make the loop stop one iteration before each time through. Then run the bubble sort experiment again and put the results in this second column here. And if you did it right, it should be a little bit faster at least it won't be tons faster. So if you get it like tons faster, then you probably mess something up. And if you get it like slower, then you probably mess something up too. It'll probably be just a little bit faster for the second column. Then we have the third column, which is merge sort. You should go ahead and run the merge sort program with again, those three changes I talked about at the start. And you will, I think, see that it is pretty significantly faster than bubble sort. And the lesson here is that these algorithmic improvements are gonna be a bigger thing than the small little changes we can make like optimizing the loop here inside of our bubble sort program. Then what you should do is you should make a graph of using Excel, Google Sheets, or some other similar spreadsheet program and draw lines basically for these three things. Have a curve that takes, you know, n as the x-axis and the amount of time that the program takes as the y-axis so you can plot out what the three curves of these programs look like and how they scale. And then when you're done, I'd like you to email me that file, that Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets thing or whatever it is. So that is what you're turning in for the lab this time. So let me know, like always, if you're stuck on anything or have any questions, but otherwise I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.